Hi everybody, welcome back. I'm the Strategy Professor, and today we're going to be looking at the Patch 8.14 Support Tier List. You can find access to this Google Doc in the description. You can also find timestamps if you want to jump around in your favorite parts. Uh, be sure also to check out my 8.14 Patch Notes. I released that a couple of days ago. I have the link here for you in the Google Doc. And then the top five best tips on how to gain ELO relatively quickly. Uh, be sure to check that out. I released it last week. It's been pretty popular. It's got a lot of uh, just sort of the best of hits that I've done uh, on the channel. So the five best things that I typically recommend to people to help gain an ELO. As far as the tier list itself goes, remember that this is primarily for a plat minus audience. It can still work, you know, in Diamond or Challenger, but this is, you know, for the bottom 99% of players. Uh, it's also intended for non-specialists who have moderate practice. So it's not for one tricks. You know, if you one trick thresh, yeah, he'd be much higher on the tier list, um, for example. And then I look primarily at potential power but I also take into account popularity and stats. So just because something has a lower overall win rate doesn't necessarily disqualify it from having a higher ranking in my mind because people may just not be building it correctly or playing the champion correctly or picking it into the wrong comps or just the champion might be really hard to play and a lot of people that play it are inexperienced. Um, so historically, you've seen a disconnect in this, right? Between like something like an Azir one trick and just a standard person who plays Azir for the first time or like a Cassiopeia one trick person who plays Cassio for the first time. Um, I mean, Thresh is probably the best example of this. People that don't have a lot of experience on Thresh are going to be pretty bad at him, but people who are very good are going to be very good on him. So keep that in mind as well. Now, I added a new system in here as far as like biggest gains, biggest losses, and we'll talk about why as we go down, but just to start off the video, just if you're wondering what are the biggest movers, what should I pay attention to? I think that Lulu is the biggest gainer in my mind, and then Fiddle and Zyra also moved up. Hey, thanks, Zach, for the sub. I really appreciate it. Um, and then the biggest losers, I think, are Alistar, Brand, and Leona, and we'll talk about why when we go in here. For each pick, you can also find a little mini Google Doc. If you look on the main Google Doc, you can find a little mini one, which gives you just sort of a snapshot guide. It'll give you um, a link to the Wikia. It'll tell you about the runes, recommended items, and if I have an in-depth guide, it'll also have that link there. Um, then I also have a five point scaling or a five point rating system just to kind of give you an idea of how the champion stacks up to others according to five different metrics that I came up with. So one is one of the weaker champions in the position at doing that specific task and five is one of the best champions at doing that task. So lane pressure is how much can you push, how much can you exert your will on the lane. Kill threat is how likely are you to get kills in the laning phase and beyond. Safety is how likely are you to be able to survive ganks and to be able to position well in team fights. Scaling is how well do you perform over time, and then reliability um, is how likely is someone to be able to play this champion at an optimal level. So part of that is mechanics and game knowledge, but part of it is also how easy is the champion to counter in a given meta. Okay, let's go ahead and get started here. Um, so I think Rakan is still at the top of the list, and I've got a, some of the patch notes here. Not a lot of the supports were touched that much. Rakan, I think, was the only one that was nerfed, um, if I'm remembering that correctly. Karma was buffed. We'll talk about Karma later. Um, yeah, so Rakan got a slap on the wrist. I think this might be important for pro play to an extent to where anyone that wants to max Q is going to have a couple more seconds on it. I think max Q is pretty terrible for solo Q most of the time because I think that you can't rely on your AD carry to actually put up that harass with you. And you are trading a lot of other really good stuff on Rakan in order to take that. So if you max Q, that means you're not maxing W or potentially E. I think W is typically a better max, but um, both the W and the E are very highly effective and powerful in team fights, and they have really long cooldowns. So they're not really designed to be one-point wonders. You know, if you only have one point in W, you're losing out on a lot of damage, a lot of mobility, a lot of CC, Similar with E, you're losing a lot of shield power. It has a really good base shield as it levels up. It also has a really high ratio. The cooldown goes down a lot, and that gives you mobility. So unlike something like Karma, for example, where you can pretty safely put a ton of points in her Q because that's her designed role is to poke, someone like Rakan, you know, his role changes, and primarily what he does best is disrupts fights and has a lot of mobility um, to exert his will in team fights, and Q doesn't do that. Q doesn't fit sort of what his theme is, what he's strong at in the mid game. It just gives you some poke in the early game. So it's a lot of wasted potential in the mid game to, in order to get a little bit of an advantage in the early game. So you'll see challengers and pros, you know, getting three to five points in Q for the laning phase, just because they need some kind of map 
pressure or lane presence rather um, early on, right? And they're going to have 80 carries that are going to complement that. They're going to play up with them. They're going to pressure. They're going to exert their will. Whereas if you're playing in like a gold game or even a platinum game and certainly lower than that, you're, 80, you're just going to try to go up and hit them with cues and your 80 carries just going to sit there and watch you a lot of the time. And then you're wasting a ton of your mid game just to get a middling amount of extra damage in. So, I mean, the bottom line here is I think that the Q change affects really high ELOs, but isn't going to matter for most people that play Rakan. The quickness, however, does matter. I mean, an extra 10 seconds is a big deal. 130 is not a super long cooldown. You typically get a lot of CDR on Rakan anyways. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's going to definitely hurt his playmaking ability. But I think he was already excessively strong, and I think he'll continue to be really strong. I think he's the best. I think he's still going to be the highest played support in pro play, or at least he's certainly going to be very far up the list. Um, and I think he's still really good in solo queue, even if you don't have Zaya. Now, Zaya is a good AD carry right now. So with Zaya, he's definitely awesome, but I still think he's great even without Zaya because he just brings so much to the table. He's so versatile. Um, you know, he can build something like a Zeke's and have a little bit of defense early against AD assassins like Talon and Zed and still give power to the AD carry. Um, so Zeke's is an awesome item in that sense that it's one of the best single item power spikes for the AD carry. And it's also a very good defensive item. And he uses that really, really well, um, early on. Cause he likes having a little bit of armor, um, just because he is going to get hit some, you don't want to go full tank on Rakan, but he's going to take a couple of hits as he goes in. So getting that armor is really nice. The CDR is nice. A little bit of extra mana is nice, particularly because his mana per five isn't amazing early on. So having that flat mana is a little bit better. Um, but he's flexible, you know. He can go Ardent Sensor also if your AD carry is really stomping. You know, if you have like a 5-0 Twitch, you can go Zeke's plus Ardent Sensor. And those two synergize very well together. He has excellent AP ratio, so he loves getting AP. If you can squeeze it into his build somewhere, then that gives them the attack speed, the on-hit damage from Ardent, and the on-hit damage from Zeke's. So that's just a really, really good option that few other supports have. You know, if your AD carry actually does well and is taken off, He's one of the champs that can do that. He can also switch gears and um, get more team fight things. So he can get a redemption. He can get a locket. And that's fine because he's so mobile, he doesn't have to build super tank. So a common build might be you could start with Zeke's. Um, your AD carries just kind of doing okay, but you really want to have more presence in team fights. You get redemption, locket. Um, you know, he can even get a Mikhail's if he has to. It's not insane on him, but he does have several heals and shields, right? His passive is a heal, or his passive is a shield. His Q. Um, provides a heal, his E shields, and if you take Aerie, that's an additional shield. Um, so you can take a McHale's for something like a Fiddlesticks if you need to, or for something like a, um, a Morgana if you have to, right? So he's just, he's very, very flexible. He's one of the most flexible champions in terms of itemization, and then also in terms of his skill set. He has the best engage in the game with his RW, um, but then he can also peel fairly well, right? If someone's trying to assassinate your AD carry, you can E back on to him, press R, it's going to CC him instantly, and then knock him up with W. Usually that's enough time. Hit him with a Q to get that extra heal in there. So he's just very, very flexible. His weakness is if you're going to pick him, and it's arguable you could put him in the top three and not number one. You could say that someone like Nami or Fiddle might be a little above him. We'll talk about those guys in a second. Guys and gal. Um, but... His, one of his big weaknesses is a lot of CC. So if he's not very good in a Fiddlesticks. He's not amazing in a Morgana. And if people have, like, tanky CC type of champions, um, you know, if they have, like, a Sejuani or a Gragas or um, you really don't want to go into things like Malzahar, certainly, or Lissandra, we're starting to see a return to more CC in the meta. There are still Assassins, but people are starting to shift back over to tanky champs and cc champs and he has a hard time with those he really hates vagar going against vagar um poppy is very annoying champions like lux are pretty annoying who have these like one shot kills um that are pretty long range so there are some counter picks to him or like not hard counters but things that are difficult for him to deal with leona is difficult to deal with like a good thrash can be fairly difficult to deal with so some of these champions are starting to come back into the meta a little bit more and so that is um that's making it a little more problematic so he's not always you know an ace every single time but he's very good a lot of the time and he has very low lane presence so you know, if you have something like an Ezreal in your lane, if it's Rakan Ezreal, and they have something like Draven Zyra, you're just going to get absolutely dumpstered in lane. So his lane presence is fairly low unless it's all in. His all in's decent with his W. 
Um, and he's very good with ganks because you can E over to the jungler and then W onto them. So he that mobility really helps out with ganks. Um, but his lane presence is lower than a lot of other top champions on the list. So that's kind of how he's balanced out. Has an amazing versatility, amazing mid game, um, just flexibility. But then he's also pretty weak in the laning phase um, and pretty susceptible to counters or to um, CC and things like that to hard counter him. Okay, and then as far as like his uh, his Google Doc goes, um, I think you almost always want to go coin in a Nomad, then Ionian, you know, and then usually Zeke, Ardent, and Redemption. You could throw a Locket in there too. Like I said, it's very flexible, but Zeke's is probably the thing that most people rush the most. You could also go Mobility Boost. That's okay. I would tend to like Ionian quite a lot because CDR is just so important for him, even more so now that his ult has that extra 10 seconds um, cooldown on it. The CDR matters even more. So that's what I would go, but mobility is definitely an option. I highly recommend not going Frostfang for the reasons that I described earlier, why I don't like getting a ton of points in Q and lane. It's just because you're not going to stick often enough harass to consistently trigger the gold, and you just don't have enough for that to matter. Like, if you do a little bit of extra damage, the poke damage in lane doesn't matter unless you either kill them or unless you get them to take an unfavorable back. You know, if... You're sitting there and you're hitting them with a lot of Qs and you've got your Spell Thief procs and your Scorch and multiple points and all that stuff. And they're just sitting there farming it up and your AD carries just sitting there watching and they took a Doran shield or something or they have a healer or they have a Nami or a Soraka or a Sona or whatever who are all becoming a little more popular, um, especially Nami, then your harass isn't going to matter. Like, if they're even on CS, if it's like 40 to 40 CS and they back, it doesn't matter how many Qs you hit. You didn't get any sort of appreciable advantage and you're sacrificing a lot of gold later on in the game because you don't have nomads. Now, you do get AP off of that item, so that is pretty good for like your shield and such later on in the game, but you're losing a lot of gold a lot of times if you don't get nomad, and the movement speed is actually quite good also off a of nomad on recon. So I'm a big proponent of nomad, although some people will get spell thieves instead. Once again, that's better at higher elo play where the harassment does matter, where your AD carry is going to chip in, um, but at lower level play, I think Nomad's just a safer bet. As far as runes, one thing that did change on this patch that really is annoying to me is Zombie Ward. And it's a huge, huge nerf to Zombie Ward for most supports. So, basically your Zombie Wards don't spawn anymore off of your own wards timing out. And this is one of the biggest uses of Zombie Ward is because your one minute ward you know, early on, I guess they change it to a 90 second ward, gets an extra 30 seconds early on. And that's a really big deal to help you prevent ganks so that you can apply more pressure in lane. Because Rakan's usually pretty safe at getting away from ganks, but he can't do a ton to help peel his AD carry out of ganks. You have a little bit, but it's not like a Thresh or a Tom Kench or something like that, right? Um, so you want really good vision in their jungle. Um, and Zombie Ward really help you get that early on. But now that doesn't happen. Um... However, you do get a little bit of extra... I think the zombie ward lasts longer? On the PBE, it lasted longer. It looks like maybe they didn't implement that. Um, but you do get extra damage. After you destroy a ward, you get 30 to 90 extra damage. Which is not trivial, but this is a lot better on assassins who have things like Dustblade. So that like when they're on, the, on their way to a gank... And I don't know how long this lasts either. If this lasts like 10 seconds or 30 seconds or I, I don't know, forever. Um... But you're not going to be able to get a sweeper. Like, you could start with a sweeper and try to make this work. But <clears throat> it just feels like you're going to have no vision yourself if you do that early on. So this doesn't seem like it would be a viable strategy until you switch over to... Once you get your wards, you swip over to the Oracle Lens. You swap over to the Oracle Lens. Um, and that's just not real... Like, that's not going to happen until, like, 10 to 12 minutes into the game. And by that point, like, 30 to 90 damage on most supports is not going to matter that much. I mean, maybe on an all-in champion like a Zyra or a Brand, maybe, but I think there are probably better options. So this this could be good on all-in burst champions, or on like junglers or maybe roaming mids like a Talon or something like that that are already going into this tree. They, they have to go for Electrocute. They have to go into the Domination Tree. They have to pick something out of this row. So instead of Eyeball Collection, maybe they go Zombie Ward for a you know, a better damage power spike when they complete their Dustblade or something. Like, I could see something like that being useful, but for supports, it's a lot worse. And so the combination of Ingenious Hunter, Zombie Ward that I've been advocating that I really, really like on Recon because it gives you so much extra vision control 
you know, lower cooldown on your redemption, on your locket, um, and then also gave you a ton of extra vision. Unfortunately, that build is dead, I think, until further notice. So it sucks. I really, like, I really wish they would come up with something that was, like, good for supports in this tree. Ghost Poro also sucks. I tried that. The problem with Ghost Poro is it gives no vision. Like, it gives, like, 400 vision. It's so small that it's actually almost a liability if you get it because you're going to put it down thinking you have vision of an area and then it just doesn't provide the same kind of vision as wards and so you're going to think you're safe but they might be able to slip through some of the shadows like for example if you put it in the river bush it doesn't even cover the entire like length of the river or width of the river whatever it doesn't cover it all so they can sneak in like around the shadows like are they going to do that all the time probably not but you're not going to have as much advanced notice because it's only half the length of a traditional vision ward so you're going to have like one second less to notice and react a lot of time this kind of stuff. So I I think it sucks. Like I've tried eyeball collection plus ingenious. It just it doesn't give you anything early game. It does give you some AP later on, which is good on Recon, but it just doesn't offer anything early. Um you know, you could go something like sudden impact that would give you more lane presence, give you the 10 spell pin, but I just don't think it's it's good. So, like, I think the Domination Tree is very lopsided. I think a lot of these runes are very interesting and useful for a lot of champs. Like, Predator's great. I mean, Predator Recon would be a lot of fun. Um, and there are a lot of other champions. And this tree is amazing. There are so many good things in this tree. Like, Ulti Hunter. You know, a lot of champions would really like that. Uh, Relentless Hunter. Being able to, you know, move around the map quicker. That's really cool. Ingenious Hunter is awesome. I love 40% on item actives. It's so great. So good on supports with your Oracle Lens. It's it's fantastic. And because you go Redemption and lock it on a lot of supports, that's an amazing rune. And even Ravenous Hunter, like the right type of champs, could be okay. But they're all in the same tree and they compete with each other. Like, if I if Ulti Hunter was here, and you could go Ulti Hunter plus Ingenious Hunter, I would love it. That would be so perfect for Recon. And a lot of supports would love that. Um, and then you might be able to actually compete with Bone Plating and Chrysalis. But as it stands right now... You pretty much have to have Bone Plating and Chrysalis on almost every support. And, um, you know, Ingenious is one of the most underappreciated, awesome runes, but it just doesn't have any friends anymore here in this tree that you can get. So I've kind of reverted to going back to the standard sort of recon the Airy, Nimbus Cloak, Transcendent, Scorch, Bone Plating, Chrysalis. It's still really good. Airy is still good. Even if you don't harass a lot early, it does help your harassment early, but it scales really well later. Um, with your shielding and with plus healing and shielding and all that kind of stuff, it's good. Nimbus Cloak is obviously amazing on Recon. Uh, Transcendence is pretty good. It allows you to get something like a locket early on, you know, in your first couple of items if you have to, and still get to that 40% CDR cap, so that's great. Scorch is all right. It's decent early. Water Walking, I think, is also respectable if you think you're going to have to roam a lot. Um, and then Bow Plating and Scorch are just standard. You have to have those. Um... Other option, instead of Bone Plating Chrysalis, like, you could, if you think for some reason you don't need to be as tanky, you could go something like Stopwatch Cosmic Insight. That does help you. Stopwatch is powerful, but you don't build it into anything later. Um, and Cosmic Insight is a very good, valuable rune, but I, just, I, I still think at the current time you still need to do Bone Plating Chrysalis. Like, you could go for something like, um, if you want to switch it up, you could go, like, Guardian... I mean, that might be a decent build, too. If you go, like, Guardian, Bone Plating, Chrysalis, Revitalize. If you think you're going to get Redemption and Locket, then you could go Nimbus, Cloak, and Transcendence. That could be decent, because Revitalize um, is really strong with uh, Redemption and Locket. But, I don't know. There's a few different permutations, but it's primarily it's got to be probably Sorcery and um, either Airy or Guardian... And then you can throw in Stopwatch Cosmic in there somewhere if you want. I, I think that Bone Plating Chrysalis, I played it lot. I played Zyro without these two runes last night, and you just feel insanely like squishy on pretty much anyone that's not a tank if you don't have these. And tanks are going to have that anyway. So, anyways, let's go ahead and move on. I think Rakan's still really strong, very flexible both in his runes and builds, but I would steer away from the Domination Tree for right now just because I, I just the Hunter Tree is great, but everything else just kind of sucks for Rakan in that tree. All right, Fiddlesticks is somebody that I've moved up. Jesus, it's already 20 minutes. Okay, well, I talked a lot about Rakan. I really want to try to see if I can get that. I know I say that's a meme on the channel, but like 30 to 45 minutes. I'd really like to get it closer to 20, but 
Anyways, let's talk about Fiddlesticks here really quickly. So, Fiddlesticks has gone up a lot. Um, he's very good on uh, or against Rakan, who is very powerful right now. He's very good against a lot of other squishy supports, so he's pretty good against Nami, pretty good against Sona. You just you have to be able to get map position and have really good warding in order to um, get really good ults off later on in the game. And so that, that can be very difficult. Because as I always say, every time I play Fiddlesticks, everybody turns into a challenger level player with vision score when, it, when you're playing Fiddlesticks. It seems like they drop so many wards because everybody is so aware and scared of the Fiddlesticks ult. Because if you land that ult, if they don't see it coming and you land that ult, you pretty much win the team fight automatically. Um... So, I, Fiddle is, he. first of all, he provides very good push, very good lane pressure. So, if bot lane doesn't have a healing support, you know, he could almost single-handedly poke both the AD carry and the support out of lane. He's very, very cheap. Um, his E is, let me see if, uh, it's not going to give us the stats on it, but it's like 50 at level 1. I think he gets 10 more per. So, you put like, you know, 2 or 3 points of E in lane is great. And then he has a point quick fear with a 575 range, which is longer than most auto attack ranges. Um, just point quick, fear somebody for a long time. That's really powerful. And then his drain is really underestimated. It does a ton of damage in lane. Like if someone's trying to all in and you just hold the drain on somebody, it does a lot. I think level one, it's like 400 damage if you get the full five second drain off. And people just disrespect it. And it heals you for a ton, obviously, as well. It's like 900 damage at level five with like a... 300% AP ratio or something ridiculous. Then his ult has an insane base damage and AP ratio damage. So, Fiddlesticks is susceptible to poke. Now, he can heal himself up in lane with um, with his drain. Okay, here we go. We got him. Yeah, so it's 400 base and then 900 with a 225% ratio. Um... <laughs> Which is crazy, and then it's a 2.25 point quick fear that's on like a 7 second cooldown. Just for um, comparison, like Malzahar's ult is also 2.25 seconds, and it's like 140 second cooldown, or 130 seconds, something like that. This is 11 seconds. <laughs> so, now yes, Malzahar's ult does damage, but you also have to stand still with Malzahar's ult. So I don't know, this is an interesting experiment, but I think like... Malzar's ult probably does a little bit more, but if you feared somebody with Fiddlesticks and then held your W on them for the same length that Malzar has to hold this down, it's like half of this damage. So you're going to be dealing like, I don't know, 100%, like 200 with a 100% AP ratio. That's probably pretty close to a level 6 Malzar ult, honestly. So, like, it's crazy. He just does so much damage. He has a great fear, great push early on. Like, really game-breaking ult, and that also gives you the ability to start fights, which is very important, so you can initiate fights with him. Um, a big buff to him fairly recently is they lowered the cooldown on his ult at um, later levels. So when you get to level 11, it's only 110 seconds. I think it used to be 120, or maybe 130. Um, so he's just very good. He has pretty good itemization too. He can go into Stopwatch, which is becoming a lot more popular. They just buffed Stopwatch a couple of patches ago to where you now get it, I think, at level or eight minutes into the game instead of ten. Something like that. So he can go Stopwatch, and then he can build that into Hourglass later. And Hourglass is nice too, very similar to Rakan. He can get some AD early to help protect him from that burst from Assassins, and he has Stopwatch to help protect him. And then the fear, you know, if you ever fear an Assassin, they're just dead. So he's really, really good, especially against squishies. Like, squishy champions like to fight, and so many people will not get a quick silver sash. They're just too greedy or too dumb to, like, know how to counter his fear. And Mikhail's just got nerfed a lot, too. So you're not going to be seeing, like, Janna's with Mikhail's to cleanse the fiddle fear as often. And so a lot of this has really elevated Fiddlesticks to prominent. He's very good against a lot of top picks, like um, Rakan, like Nami. Popular items that counter him, like Mikhail's are no longer in vogue. People don't get Quicksilver Sash anymore because the 80 items cost more gold, so it's a lot harder to afford Quicksilver without completely destroying your damage. Um, yeah, and just the runes have lined up to make him stronger too. Now, a lot of people have been going um, Aftershock on him, which is kind of weird, but it does give you more survivability. It gives you that 70 armor and magic resist like right when you fear somebody, so that does help you with all-ins and lane. Um... And then it also just allows you, whenever you ult and fear somebody, 
it keeps you alive long enough to where you can at least throw your E and then um, Hourglass before you get blown up. So it does give you some more survivability. It also allows you to go um, Bone Plating and Chrysalis and then Revitalize. Revitalize is actually pretty good with your um, W and Lane for Sustain. Just decent. And then you can still get um, Stopwatch and Hourglass. Now another build, obviously, you could go on him would be something like Airy. So you could go like Airy. Nimbus Cloak is really good on him too. You ult and then you get all this extra movement speed. I think Nimbus has a delay on it though, from what I remember. It's like after a certain length of time, you get it. Um, after a 1.5 second delay. I, th I think actually once you start channeling your ult, it counts. So like, because your ult takes a second and a half to channel as well. So I think that you get this speed like right when you do it. And that's actually really helpful. So Nimbus is good. And then you can get something like Transcendence, which is really good. Help you get that CDR cap faster. Or you could get, you know, Celerity or whatever. Um, and then Scorch also applies. So I still think that the Airy to Scorch, Airy, Nimbus, Transcendence, Scorch is a really good build with um, Stopwatch and uh, Cosmic. But you're a lot squishier, so you kind of have to measure the lane. If you're against a Leona, you might want to go Aftershock. If you're against a Janna, maybe you can get away with going um, Airy. So, it's kind of up to you. But yeah, Fiddlestick's really, really strong for those reasons. And you just want to go Ionian, Watcher, Hourglass, Twin Shadows. Just get to that, you know, 40% CDR as fast as you possibly can. Um... I usually don't even upgrade to Watcher until later. I just stay, stick with Frostfang. Hourglass is a huge power spike. And then you can get whatever you want that gives you 10% CDR after this. I tend to like Twin Shadows. It helps you scout the jungle a little bit better so that you can get proper vision without exposing yourself because he's very, very susceptible to getting like picked off and killed in the mid game when he's trying to ward and sweep wards. So Twin Shadows helps keep you safe. Um, you could also go something like Shirelia's, which helps your team like engage maybe, but... Um, I tend to like Twin Shadows the best. It also gives more AP. That got buffed pretty recently. Also, Hourglass and Shadows got buffed over the last like four or five patches. So that Those both help Fiddlesticks as well. Okay, let's go ahead and move on. Uh, talking about Nami here. So, uh, Nami is the highest statistical win rate champion right now. And she's just a good, like, she's the best sustained bully champion, I think. Um, just spamming that wave on people is really, really strong. Um, just over and over and over again because it does damage and heals you all on one ability. And, you know, it just synergizes so well with Aerie and Scorch and Frostfang. You can just do that over and over again and just basically 1v2 the lane. If they don't have something like a Leona or a Zyra or something like that that can come in and kill you... Um, She's almost unstoppable in lane. She's just such a nightmare, like levels 1 to 5. If you can survive that a little bit later on, um, you know, she doesn't do as much. But she does have, like, as far as herself, but she does have good utility for the team. So, like, the E gives a lot of sticking power, especially to AD carries. Like, um, like Jin allows them to stick to people a little bit better. Or um, Junglers that want to stick to people like a Master Yi. Um... It's really good utility. It also speeds people up, so you can get people out of sticky situations. And of course, she has two forms of hard CC with her um, her Q and her R. They're both pretty good and on low cooldowns. Uh, and she's very versatile too. She does she can scale decently well with plus healing and shielding, but because her kit is so versatile, you don't have to get plus healing and shielding. Um, so like someone like Sona or. Um, Soraka, they're all in. Like, they have to get plus healing and shielding because that's what they do. Like, that's the huge part of their kit. That's their major function. Whereas, like, Nami is kind of a disruptor later on that just happens to have a heal as well. And so you can afford to get something like a Zeke's if you really need to against an AD Assassin and still function perfectly well. You have a pretty low cooldown ult. It does hold people in place so that... Because that's, like, some of the things, like, the criteria for Zeke's, obviously it's good on tanks. But like non-tanks, it needs to be you have an ult that can hold people still. It's on a fairly low cooldown. And you your kit is primarily defined by something other than plus healing and shielding. Because if you have to have plus healing and shielding, you're going to need to get your redemption and your ardent sensor and all that stuff. So she can do that, but she can also go Zeke's because she has so much other utility in her kit. And she has that low cooldown ult that holds people still. So that's something that sets her apart from someone like a Sona or a Soraka. 
is that she can also get this really powerful item in the meta that counters a lot of AD assassins. So she's a lot more durable um, than some of these other champs. And she also has pretty long ranges. I mean, the wave itself, I think, is 750 range, something like that, maybe 725. So it's pretty far back, and it can bounce around to a bunch of different people. Your E, I believe, is on like an 800 or 900 range. Your bubble is like 900 range. Then your wave is like really far away. So you can play pretty far back, which allows you to stay out of collateral damage from area of effect abilities. Whereas someone like Sona has to get a lot closer to the team for maximum efficiency off of her auras. And Soraka's heal is like 450 range. So it's really, really close. Um, so those champions will sometimes get hit by stuff like... Um, like a Brand ult, for example, or a Zyra ult, or a Cannon ult. Like, it's really hard to space properly and heal, um, you know, especially the front line in team fights. And some of those champs are coming back a lot more. You're seeing a lot more Brand, you're seeing a lot more Zyra, and then just these, like, team fight comps are coming back. And so it's important that you have that proper spacing, and Nami allows you to do that. So yeah, I mean, I think she's just great. Early game bully, like really good versatility. Late game spacing, versatile items. You know, she can go for the redemption ardent sensor build if she needs to, but she can also go, you know, something like Zeke's early if she needs more armor. If that Zed goes, you know, 4-0, you know, in the first 10 minutes mid lane, you have that option um, if you need it. So I think that makes her really powerful right now. Um, uh, Lulu is someone who rose the most. She was the biggest gainer. I had been playing some Lulu lately. And it's very similar to Nami, why I think that Lulu uh, has risen to popularity. Now, Lulu's not going to have an amazing win rate, probably. She's probably sitting at like 48% or something. Um, she's very difficult to play for a lot of people. And the reason for that is it's it's tough to make the decision around her W to where whether you should polymorph or whether you should boost up your AD carry. It's also really easy to misclick that. So if, like, the Assassin... You know, the Rengar jumps on your AD carry, and you're trying to polymorph the Rengar. It's really easy to misclick and accidentally boost up the, um, increase the attack speed of your, of your Caitlyn right before she dies because you didn't polymorph Rengar. Um, so her abilities, like her E and her W, can either hit enemies or allies, and sometimes it's really, really important to get the mode correct on that. And so when champions are overlapping like that, it can be very difficult to get your targeting right. Um, and then she's pretty vulnerable. Like, if you don't sequence her spells correctly, she can definitely get picked off and killed. Um, and she's pretty unforgiving if you take a bad trade in lane because you don't have a heal. So she's one of the um, one of the only enchanters bot lane that doesn't have a heal other than Janna. Um, and so she can potentially have a pretty hard matchup against, like, a Nami or um, a Sona, Soraka early on. So that's rough. But what she does bring to the table is she can also, she has the option of getting Zeke's if she needs to because her shield is the only thing that's plus healing and shielding. Her ult counts as an infusion of health, not a heal. So it's not reduced by ignite, but it's also not buffed by things like redemption. Um, and she has a low cooldown ult. I think it's only like 110 seconds. It's really low. And um, it does hold people still. The person that you ult um, has an AoE slow around them. But she's really, really good against assassins. I mean, that's that's the big kicker, is that she just crushes assassins. Because not only does she have polymorph, which lasts just as long as the Fiddle Fear, um, the 2.25 seconds, but she also has that point-click ult, which not only gives people a huge infusion of health, but also knocks them up in the air and CCs them for an additional, you know, like, second or so. So she's just an absolute nightmare um, for a lot of assassins to deal with. And she is one of the highest buffing champions. She uh, produces the most DPS output if you have an attack speed 80 carry um, later on in the game. So she's phenomenal. Hey, thanks, Pablo. I really appreciate it, the sub. If you're watching this also and you're enjoying this content, don't forget to like and subscribe. I know it's annoying to sign into Google sometimes, but it really does help other people find the content. Um, cause there's just not a lot of really good in-depth tier list it's just like okay here's a 10 minute tier list here are good champions they have good stats that's it and they don't people don't explain why or like what's changing in the meta um so help people find the content but yeah i think that you know if you pair her with something like kogma it's just through the roof if you look at her and i've talked about this in my lulu guide on the channel so be sure to watch that as well that people really underestimate just how much damage she contributes especially now that janna's banned they're not banned but um nerfed a lot um, then Lulu has become the premier buffer uh, for her team. Why can't I 
spell. There we go. Alphabet's hard sometimes. Is it going to give us the stuff? Yes, we got it. Okay. So not only does she give the 45% um, bonus attack speed, which that in and of itself is pretty big, she also gives 30% move speed, which is really huge. Um, and she gives this on hit damage. And a lot of people forget about this, but this is a lot, right? This is a lot of on hit damage. I mean, Varus goes an on hit build with his W, and it only has like 26 on hit damage and is really, really strong um, later on into the game. This provides up to 117 with a 15% AP ratio. So, like, if you get 100 AP, if you get, like, an Ardent Sensor or an Athenes, you know, and in the mid-game, it's, like, 75 on-hit damage. So, not only are you giving a lot of attack speed and move speed to your Kog'Maw or your Twitch or your Kai'Sa or whatever, but you're also giving them an extra on-hit damage that just scales insanely well with the attack speed they already have in their kit. Now, Gensu's does not proc this twice, I'm pretty sure, because it's a basic attack that triggers it not on hit. So Gensu's will not proc this twice. But, nevertheless, it's still really, really strong. And a lot of people forget that about her passive, that it does a lot of damage. If you put it on the AD carry later on, someone who has a lot of attack speed, it just obliterates everybody. So yeah, she is pretty good with those champions. So keep an eye on her next patch. If they bring back the crit champions, Lulu is going to make a big splash. Now, yeah, people will say, okay, well, this shield only lasts for 2.5 seconds. But to be honest, it's going to break before that. Like, it's not a, a huge shield to begin with, right? And you don't max the shield first, typically. You'll get three points in shield for lane, primarily because it's also your point-click harass. It does pretty good damage in the lane. Um, but then after that, you max Whimsy anyways. And so, yeah, you're shielding somebody for 140 with a .6, so you have 100 AP. You're shielding somebody for 200. If you put that on someone who's getting attacked, they're going to take 200 damage in 2.5 seconds most of the time, right? You know, you throw this on your um, your 80 carry who's getting dove by Zed or something, like, it's going to break. Or you throw this on your, um, your whatever, your Graves who's trying to go in and you know, assassinate the enemy jungler, like, it's going to break in two and a half seconds most of the time. So it's also important to note that um, they keep the picks, I think, for six seconds, right? True Sight for four seconds. It doesn't... Yeah, casting this transfers it for six seconds. So that didn't change. So if you press E on your AD carry just to give them picks, so if you W your AD carry and then press E on them just to give them picks so they get that extra on-hit damage, that still lasts for six seconds. So that'll still last for the entire Zig's ult and most of the Kog'Maw um, W, enough for him to kill everybody. So, you know, that part is fine. It's just the shield changed. And if you're using that anyways to put it on the Kog'Maw or the Twitch or whatever... They're not probably taking a lot of damage anyways. If you're putting it on the Twitch when he's opening up and murdering everybody, the shield doesn't even matter. You're just putting it on him for the damage. And so that it triggers um, Ardent Sensor, right? Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think people are overdoing just how much that nerf on the shield timer. It doesn't really matter that much. Like, there are some corner cases, maybe, where it might matter if it's really slow um, or if they're... I, it's just, it's so few cases where that matters. Also, this is very good against um, invisible champions, right? So it grants true sight of them for four seconds. Even things that can't be seen, I think it's even invisible stuff. So, like, if you put this on um, Shaco and he tries to jump away, it still sees him. Or if you put this on Vayne and she's tumbling around, it still sees her. I'm pretty sure. I'm about 99% sure that it does. Um... Let me click on True Sight here and see. Anyways, I'm not going to have time to read all of this, but I'm like... Stealth units... But I'm like 99% sure it does. If it doesn't see those, it at the very least will track something like a Twitch when he goes invisible or things that stealth. So that's like, that's Twitch, Evelyn, um, 
there's one other one that I'm not remembering offhand, but anyways, it sees invisible stuff, so that's kind of a corner case, but it is pretty good against them. I, it might see new Akali. I mean, this could be a thing. I don't know if it'll see her in her shroud. We'll have to see how that interaction goes, but it might see the new Akali next patch. So once again, AD carries getting buffed next patch, probably. Akali coming in, everyone's going to be playing her. One of her big powers is her invisibility. This can see that. Could be good next patch, but we'll have to see. Anyway, she's really strong. So, kind of a weak matchup against um, some healing enchanters in the bot lane, but you can work around that with just some careful play. Um, but yeah, I think she's a really good option if the enemy team has a lot of CC also, and you're too scared to play Rakan, but you have a really powerful AD carry, like a really powerful AD carry, like a Jinx or a, um, a Twitch or something like that that scales really hard with attack speed, um, then she can be really strong. Okay, Morgana didn't get any nerfs this patch for some reason. I mean, some people might consider her the number one support. She's okay. I think she's a little... She's um, was the most banned support. I think she still is by quite a lot. Um, yeah, she's banned in 39% of games. People just hate playing against this champion. Like, Black Shield is just really, really, like, a terror if you have a fed AD carry on your... Or a fed assassin on your team. Something that does a lot of damage, fed, which happens almost every game. It's so strong. You know, if you black shield something like Katarina or Fizz or... Well, not Fizz got nerfed, so I guess that doesn't matter anymore. But Master Yi, it's whatever does a ton of damage. If you just make them anti cc -able, then that's a really strong interaction. So she has that. She pushes waves really well early on with her W. And then, of course, she has her, um, her Q, which binds somebody for three seconds. Like, they're going to die if you bind them. So she is insanely powerful right now. She kind of has some weaknesses against um, like AD assassins, but those are falling off a little bit. Talon did get nerfed this patch. Um, now she herself can, she's kind of like um, Lulu and Nami. She can build Zeke's early. She does get Hourglass early. So, um, you know, she can stack some armor if she needs to because she doesn't need a lot of plus healing and shielding. Because like her black shield benefits, but whatever, it's fine. And she has a low cooldown ult that holds people in place. So she has a lot of really good itemization options. Um, she is skill shot reliant. You have to hit those Qs, but really there's not much of a penalty if you miss your Q. I mean, okay, you miss your Q. What are they going to do? They try to dive on you. You just ult, you know, Black Shield or AD Carry and just Hourglass, and you just zoned them all off probably. So she's very, very strong. You could definitely put an argument up for her being number one. I mean, a lot of these champs are pretty close. Like, it just depends on the situation where you would want them. But I think you could shuffle this around pretty easily, the top five. And they're all really, really good in different situations. Um, so, yeah, I mean, Morgana's biggest weakness is if she's up against a lot of poke early on, she can get blown up by, by like, a Brand or a Zyra. Um, or if you're really late on your shields and you get hooked by, like, a Pike or a, um, a Blitz or something like that, you could definitely die. Um, so, yeah, she's kind of skill-reliant in that sense where you need to know when the CC's coming in, and you need to have a really fast reaction time with that black shield. Because um, if you don't, if you don't, if you black shield late, there's no point in playing her. Most of the time, if that hook still lands on the AD carry, there's no point in playing her. So that, that can be tricky, but she's very strong. Um, so yeah, I still expect to see her in quite a few pro games along with Rakan. Um, well, it looks like we might be closer to an hour, but let's, let's see if we can finish up in an hour. Um, Okay, uh, moving down into Tier 2 here, um, and then as far as, like, runes and stuff for Morgana, um, I think that you still just go the standard, Airy to Scorch, Boneplate and Chrysalis, then just Ionian Nomad, um, Zeke's Ardent Redem- well, I'm gonna say, um, I kinda changed my mind about Zanya. it just gives you so many extra options if you have that item, and it allows you to get Stopwatch early, and I think that's, that's pretty solid, so... I think we'll just go like that, I think, is a little more reasonable. But, yeah, like I say, it's very flexible. You know, you can get other stuff if you have to. But Hourglass is pretty nice. Okay. Um, then we have the AP supports. I've kind of brought them down to a little bit. I mean, Zyra could be up in Tier 1, potentially. Um, she does have pretty good matchups into, like, Fiddlesticks. Like, my issue with Zyra is, like, I have one with her recently, and she is very strong. She's probably the strongest support in the laning phase like you can completely bust people up with her and the zyra versus brand i get asked about a lot like the main difference there is 
Zyra is going to be better in the laning phase because she has much more consistent poke and more consistent all-in because she ignores minions, right? You can throw your E through the minions to go for um, snares on people. They did buff her snare recently as well to I think where it's two seconds now. They got like an extra point two five seconds. Um, you can also Q her ass through people and that doesn't matter. Um, whereas Brand, to get his full combo, to get the real damage in, you need to be able to hit your Q and... That requires a straight line, so minions can block it. And your E is very close range as brand. I think it's like 650. <laughs> it's really close. So you can't really walk up and do your E a lot to people if they're ranged. Um, now, brand is very good later on um, if everyone's bunched up. So if everyone's playing a lot of melee champions, then brand's going to be really good. Um, versus, uh, like, Zyra is very good at cc multiple people so you know in a late game team fight you could potentially bind like three people and then ult those three people and knock them all up and then they're cc they take a ton of damage and they've been cc'd for like three seconds and boom you just instantly win a team fight i did that like three times last night on stream and i pretty much turned the game those three fights carried that game really really hard um if i do say so myself it was a really rough game i had a terrible start but it's just Zyra has the ability to do that. If you land that snare on multiple people and then you ult multiple people, that's really powerful. Whereas Brand, like you have one stun that can hit one person with your Q. So it's not as much CC in a team fight, not as much zoning potential, but it has, you know, the potential to do a lot more damage if you trigger the ult on a lot of other people. It's much easier to play also. You just press R, you know, on a on a lot of people in a fight. So, you know, if a bunch of people come in and dive you, you can just press R on them, just panic, press R, and just spam all your buttons, and you might still kill somebody. Because he does so much damage. So, they are a little different, but I tend to like Zyra, favor Zyra a little bit more, just because of her consistency in lane, her CC later, and her ability to ward also with those plants, basically. So you can, like, check tri bushes and things like that with plants, and that's just a lot safer um, than other options so i favor zyra a little bit more but brand is still really strong it's just both of these champions are very susceptible to early game ganks and getting camped which still happens a lot junglers just can't bottom all the time you're going to be pushing because of your plants this is why she's not played in like challenger and pro play a lot is because she's very susceptible to ganks and she almost always has to push with her plants um but yeah and she's susceptible to roams from the mid lane so it's still very popular just to camp bottom all game because that has the highest rewards, and it has had the highest rewards pretty much forever. And because Vision is a lot weaker now, especially with Zombie Ward being down, um, then it, it's just a lot harder to play safe as these types of champs. But if you have a lane dominant jungler, and especially if you have a dominant mid, or not a lane dominant, but like a dominant jungler and a, um, a dominant mid lane, then these can be pretty good picks if you're not going to get roamed on. So, you know, if their mid lane is playing Diana and your mid lane is playing, um, you know, Talia or Twisted Fate or something, and they're going to be pushing their tower, that makes Zyra a lot more attractive because it's a lot less likely you're going to get roamed on by the mid lane. And if their team has, like, a Master Yi and your team has, like, a Graves or something, then that looks a little better. Whereas if the tables were turned, you know, if they had a much more aggressive jungler and a, much, and a winning mid lane, that'd be a little dicier, so... You gotta be careful. Like, you can play her into almost anything. It's just she can have a really hard time if that assassin, you know, if that Zed or LeBlanc goes 5-0 and mid lane, which they always do, um, then it can be really hard to deal with. You don't have any defenses later. But if you do want to play her, she's very, very strong in the laning phase. And if you can snowball it, you can definitely win. Um, but yeah, just Comet, Mana Flow, Transcendent, Scorch. I like Transcendence a lot because it's really hard for her to get CDR, and it's a very powerful stat on her. But the items that she gets just don't have it. Um, then Bone Pointy and Chrysalis. Um, then you almost always just want to go um, Leandre, Rylize. I wouldn't go Morello most of the time. Maybe if they have Mundo or something like that. But you're giving up a lot of damage if you don't have Leandre, Rylize. That's just the most damage you can get with a lot of utility. It does give you some health, so a little bit of survivability. Um, and then Void Staff is a nice way to finish it off. It, you know, if they have an assassin, like, you might be able to consider Zhonya's, but it, you lose a lot of damage if you get that, so it just kind of depends on your team comp and how much damage you need. But yeah, I think that she definitely can be pretty strong. 
And then Brand we just talked about. Very similar to Zyra. You would just pick Brand. If they have a lot of melee on their teams, they're all going to be bunched up. He's going to do more damage later on. Um, and if you have someone else with CC um, and you can chain it together, then Brand is probably better. Like, he has more um, do-it-yourself, all-in, burst damage if you hit all three pieces of your combo. So if you have someone like a... Um, I'm trying to think of something that would have CC. Like, maybe a... Um, an Ash or a Varus, or if you're playing like a non-traditional, if you have like a Swain bottom, Brand can be really good with that because he's going to hit his bind, then you hit your stun, and they're basically dead. So anything like that that has sort of um, combo potential with lots of CC can be really strong bot lane. So he's pretty good with a lot of the non-traditionals bot lane also. He also is a pretty good bot laner himself, um, but that's for a different category. Okay. Uh, Sona, I think, has been rising up in popularity and strength a little bit more. You know, she's climbing up. She's actually the number two win rate right now. And a lot of that has to do with people are moving more towards these team fight oriented things. So you're seeing less, like, three assassin teams and, like, maybe one assassin um, <coughs> type of thing. And they nerfed uh, Janna a lot. So if we start moving towards team fight stuff, then um, she just outperforms Janna most of the time. And she's just a time bomb. Like, the buff to Athenes was massive on her a couple of patches ago. Um, she didn't get her shields nerfed. Like I said, I think that's over overhyped on the like champions like Lulu. I don't think the shield nerf mattered that much. But um, on champions like Janna, it mattered a lot. It was an extra nerf on Janna. Um, and yeah, she's become like the premier sort of scaling team fighter type of champion because she can get Athenes, it's really powerful because she can get ardent sensor neither one of those lost that much mikhail's really lost the most which is something that like soraka has to have um but sona most of the time doesn't have to build that item and so losing like two percent healing off of ardent is like okay whatever um two percent on redemption is whatever um but she's always has been an elegant combination of really good early game harass and then exceptionally strong team fighting later on because of her interaction with Ardent Sensor, because you can put it on everybody with your W, you know, every two seconds um, with your W or so. And then also you can do a decent chunk of damage with your Q, which also gives you tons of extra healing off of Athenes. So her synergy with Athenes and with Ardent Sensor... Uh, makes her very strong. So if you have tanks on your team, especially if you have Dr. Mundo, if you have Gragas Jungle, um, you know, things like that, then she's very, very strong later on. It's just, she's really, really susceptible to assassins. So once again, kind of like the brand and Zyra, you need to make sure you're not going to get camped bottom or it's going to be a very bad time for you. You can get, um, you can get Zeke's if you really, really have to, but it's pretty bad on her. Like, her ult is on a fairly... It's like a 130, 140-second cooldown. It's not super low, but it does hold people still. Um, so, like, that's an option. It's not one that you really want to do at all most of the time, but it is something that is within the realm of possibility if you need an armor item. Um, in theory, you can go something like Ninja Tabby also because her cooldowns are so low on everything except for her ult that you don't need the CDR as much as someone like Rakan. Because she gets extra CDR on her abilities through her ult, the passive on her ult. And her abilities start, I think her Q is on like a 6 second cooldown to start with. So it's pretty low cooldowns anyways. Let me just see if there's anything funky that people are building. Um, yeah, it's just, it's pretty much still go airy, um, airy down to Scorch. And then um, Chrysalis Bone Plating. Now, a lot of people, there's some people getting Athenes, but I think a lot of people are sleeping on that, too. I think that item is very, very strong, especially after the changes um, on her. Now, some people are still getting tier. I really don't like tier on her anymore, because you don't turn it into anything useful, like in most games. Like, if the game goes to 40 minutes, you might get Archangels, but... I don't think it's that amazing on her. And if you go for Athenes that has 100% base mana regen early, and if you have Frostfang that's 50, that's enough, you know, usually. Like, yeah, you can spam all of your spells and still run out of mana if you really are trying hard. But, um, you know, having the Athenes um, 
does give you that extra ability. Now, Shiroi is a something else, which is decent. That does give you health. It gives you mana regen. I mean, it gives you a lot of good stuff. So that's something else to consider. I wish it was still a 60-second cooldown. Um, but that's something else that can potentially be a pretty good teamfight item, and it does give you extra AP um, on Athenes. So that's good. She has really, really good AP ratios. Like, some of the best in the game off her W and off of her um, Q because they affect multiple targets. So each one of those is like over well over a 1.0 ratio. So it's very she has really really good AP ratios, but you don't want to do something like Lich Bane or like some of these other shenanigans just because you're she has really good synergy with like team fighting stuff. So you really want team helper items. Um so Sorelia is something is definitely within consideration. I think Redemption's still good on her as well. Ardent sensor is good, so she's pretty flexible. It just depends on how your team's doing. If your team, if your AD carry is not doing that well, or if they're playing something like Misfortune or Jinx, which are really popular, Ardent's not going to help that much, um, just because they don't really attack like that fast, right? They're just kind of like more like burst type of champions. Um, whereas if you have Twitch, maybe you would like Ardent sensor. So you just got to kind of feel it out. But I think that Athenes has been one of the missing pieces that has helped her out a lot, kind of undercover lately. And sort of just the cha overall changes in the meta where people were starting to shift more towards team fights again, and they're looking for a team fighting support, and Janna is just a shadow of her former self. So I think that Sona is stepping up to help out with that. So yeah, I think that Sona is definitely coming up a little bit. You know, if the team fight trend continues to escalate, especially with um, AD carries potentially coming back next patch a little bit more, um, then we might see Sona improve. And by the way, they're doing what I've been suggesting for three patches, pretty much, which is lower the crit on 80 carries by 5%, and then um, decrease the cost by 200 on all of the crit items. That's exactly what I've recommended. So they, they're finally, they figured it out, they solved the puzzle, um, and it looks like they might do that next patch, but we'll see. That's just on the PvE right now. Okay, Pike is somebody else. Um, he's been rising to popularity lately. Um, I think he's probably the best hook champion. <clears throat> so, uh, he does have a pretty nice hook where it's on a fairly low cooldown and it's low mana. There's like a blitz hook's like 100 mana. His is only 70. And it, you know, starts at 16 and goes all the way down to 8 seconds, which is a really light hook. Um, does pretty strong damage. I mean, 275 with a 60% bonus AD ratio is very good. And if you just stab somebody, it does even more damage, um, which applies a pretty nice slow. So it's versatile. Um, and he's surprisingly really safe, too. It's something that playing him and playing against him that I've noticed is if you play him well, he's very, very safe. Because you can use this ghost water dive and pretty much get away from almost anything. So it not only turns you uh, camouflage like Twitch, but you get a huge bonus movement speed as well, like 60%. So people just, even if they see you, a lot of times they're not going to catch you. And it allows you to juke a lot of skill shots when you do that as well. This is also pretty nice for warding in really dangerous territory. So if you're not sure if an area is warded or not, you can use your W to sneak in there and drop wards. And if you drop a ward, it does not reveal you. So you can sneak into like the enemy jungle if you have mobility boots, which he usually gets. You can sneak in, ghost water, and just like ward up some of their bushes and just not even worry about the jungle finding you. And if they do find you, whatever, you just phantom undertow, jump over a wall, and you're gone. Like, he's so safe <laughs> a lot of the time because of these things. Because um, he has a dash, which also stuns people if they try to follow you. And he has this ghost water dive to get away. So I think a lot of people are still learning him. Um, he is very complex. I think he's very interesting. Um, because people are running less AD in all roles, AP is making a comeback in a big way in almost every lane. That does free him up to be a lot more effective because people aren't stacking as much armor as they were when he first came out and everybody was playing AD. But you're starting to see a return to AP in a lot of roles. Um, so that definitely helps him out a lot. They did give him some buffs like last patch i think or the patch before that with extra ad ratios so i think that like dust blade ghost blade is really good i don't see a lot of people get ghost blade but in my mind that seems really strong on him because that allows you to run up and um get the phantom undertow on people a lot easier and that's just a really good way to start a fight for picking people off like yeah you can go for the full hook but if you get the phantom undertow and get that stun and then um, just hold your bone skewer until they flash and then hit them with it. Like, that's a really, really powerful effect. Um, so, yeah, I think he's great. Like, he obviously generates a lot of extra gold for your team if you get those executes. Um, 
He has a stun that can hit multiple targets. He has a hook to pick people off. You just have to be very careful with the Phantom Undertow. You can really get yourself in trouble. And this is something that I find myself doing a little too much is trying to pick someone off with this when they're not alone. And then I end up getting... Like, I'll try to go in with Ghostwater Dive so I'm invisible and then Phantom onto them and see if I get the kill. But then I don't have either one of my escapes if I do that. And then all of a sudden, two other people show up or whatever. So you got to be a little careful. But late game, just fishing for people with these bone skewers, especially if you just relocate with your uh, ghost water dives. So you can just like ghost water and then just go invisible and like wrap around to a bush or a weird wall or angle. They're like not expecting it. Hit them with hooks. Like he has a lot of utility and a lot of cleanup potential. So I think he is quite strong. Now he and he does have a lot of sustain. So he's kind of vulnerable to poke, but he heals back most of it. Honestly, if you take a pretty bad trade, you you heal a ton of it back. So he is really good. I mean, it's very possible that he could be a top-tier support. He's on the cusp. If people get a little better with him, I'd probably put him all the way up there. But um, he's very, very strong right now. He doesn't have much peel, so if your team falls behind or they have assassins that keep diving your AD carry, you really can't do a lot about that. Like, you know, you can try to bone skewer and peel him and maybe use your phantom undertow, but realistically, you don't have any shields, heals. Um, your stuns are kind of conditional. So, he's all right, but he's much, much better on offense than he is on defense. So, he doesn't have the same kind of defensive capabilities that Thresh has with his Lantern and his Flay. Um, but I would say he has more offensive capabilities. So, I think that he is a pretty strong option if you just want some pure offense. Especially if you have an 80 carry, it does a ton of damage like a Draven. Um, well, Draven is kind of a nombo because... Not a combo because... Um, if you take the kill from Draven, Draven doesn't get the gold, I don't think. I'm not 100% about that interaction. Draven might get the gold. I don't know. But, like, with a Jin or a Misfortune or something, it could be pretty good. So, yeah, I think he's strong right now. Um, Leona fell down a little bit here. And my thought process with that is... She just seems really risky most of the time. Like, she is very good into Rakan and Fiddlesticks and Nami. I mean, maybe she deserves to be a little bit higher. But, um... She's just super risky, and like, she's very bad into Morgana, who's really popular right now. And like, if you fall behind, it just feels really hard to win. Although, if you're playing with Draven, and she, I don't know. She's like sometimes she's just amazing and like really overpowered, and then sometimes she's just completely worthless. Like that's why she's just not consistent, and that's why I have her down a little bit lower. It's just like if they camp you, you're gonna lose. If your jungle comes down there, you're probably gonna win. Do they nerf Leona? I nerfed her. You nerfed her. Yeah, on my tier list. Oh no. What is that, Rory's this is outfit? This Leona shorts. Oh, nice. These my wife the, is preparing for the. Uh, these are the ones I got from Walmart. Nice. These are for the, the ones cosplay, we just Lulu got cosplay. From Amazon. You need to try them on. All right, I'll try them on a little bit. Um. I want to see them. But yes, yeah, so, I mean she's okay. I just feel like. I mean, she's the best engaged tank that's up here. So if you need something tanky that wants to engage, I think, you know, she's pretty good. Um, but, yeah, I mean, she's, she's all right. You can definitely win with her. She's just a little too risky for my taste. And I don't like recommending her just because she's so inconsistent. But, like, if you're, like, silver or bronze and um, you're really just wanting to carry hard, like, you can definitely do it with Leona. You just need to make sure you have really good vision and coverage and... Um, Really good map presence, too. Make sure you have a winning mid, mid lane and jungle and all that kind of stuff. But she could be good. All right, Soraka I have down a bit lower. I think she's still pretty vulnerable to assassins. Um, the nerf to Mikhail's hurts her quite a lot because she really wants that item, and you lose 5% of your plus healing and shielding on it. She can provide a lot of harassment in lane, which is nice. Um, but... Uh, probably like 4 o'clock. Um, there she is. Um, but yeah, I mean, she, she's okay. If tanks make a comeback, if you start seeing, like I say, like Mundo, Graga, stuff like that, she's going to be really strong. So I don't have her in there as much as uh, Sona because I think Sona's ult in a team fight situation is going to be a lot stronger. And I think that Sona uses the themes a lot better. I think that Soraka still needs to get Mikhail's redemption. Um, Sona also has the option of getting like a Zeke's if she has to get it. Whereas Soraka, there's absolutely no way she can get that item. Um, so she's all right. She, she's still pretty good. Um, 
Janna, still strong in the right circumstances, very good anti-engage. She's just absolutely atrocious early game. But if you get to three items, if you get your, you know, your Mikhail's, your Redemption, and your um, Ardent Sensor, she can be really strong. She, she's not particularly good with um, Athene. She's not particularly good with Zeke's. Um, so, like, some of the best, like, hot items early on she can't really do. She doesn't offer a lot of help to AD carries who are pretty weak early. A lot of the scaling crit AD carries are still kind of on the weak side. But, you know, if you make it to... 20 25 minutes she can definitely take over oh are you upset for me is she grumpy is she feeling a little grumpy she may have beat her pants a little bit are you grumpy you want to clap rory what are you doing can you clap did you just wake up rory look the pink pants Match this onesie. It's the same pink. Good oh job. no, she doesn't like it. She does not like Good it. Good job, Dada. <laughs> Sorry, baby. She says, "I want to go back to sleep." Uh, Daddy and I were out in the heat was today. The one sitting up. Did you take her pants off when you went out in the heat? Oh, didn't want to get sunburned. Did she take those socks off, or did you? She did. Oh. There was one on the floor. <laughs> she went to bed with other, her socks on. The other one is. is that right, Rory? All right, we got to finish this up. So yeah, she's okay. I think there are better options. She does scale really well. I think that Sona outdoes her most of the time. But picking her into someone who has like really hard engage is difficult to deal with, like a Zach or something like that, or maybe like a Lee Sin, just things that can jump around a lot. Um, and then she's still going to be a little bit better. So she's she's okay. She's better into something like a Leona. If you feel like you really need an enchanter or you want one and like Morgana's banned and you don't want to do Sona into that, like she could be a good pick. So like there are some cases where she can be really strong, but I think she gets outshined by a lot of others. Tom Kinch, still pretty good in the right circumstances. Um, you know, if they have a lot of CC, he's a very good anti CC champ. I think that Morgana's probably a little bit better um, a decent chunk of the time, but Kinch potentially could be. Uh, could be really strong. Um, he is a very good Zeke's user. Um, he does counter a lot of the other really popular champions pretty well. He doesn't have a ton of lane pressure. He has some. He does have some mobility around the map, which is great. So if you're duo queued with a jungler, or um, you can convince your jungler to come down there and help you out with ganks bottom. If they have a very immobile bot lane, you know, if they're rolling with like, you know, something like Misfortune plus Leona. You know, you can go down there and definitely, um, or like Draven, Draven, uh, Brand or something like that. You can definitely go down there and catch him out with your jungler. Um, so I think that he does have some applications. It's just, it's harder to pull off in solo queue because it requires a little bit more coordination, but I think he can be good. Alistar a knocked down quite a bit. I think there are better, like, all-in engaged champions right now. He just, he doesn't do a lot. Like, early on, he does have some decent damage with his Stampede. Um, if you can land it, your E, if they don't jump away or dash away or whatever. He does have a point-click engage, which is really nice. But kind of like Leona, it's pretty easy to pick him off and kill him. If your team's behind, it's really hard to, like, make a comeback because you don't have a reverse gear. And I think that Leona just does that better right now. Like, she has a, um, she can engage from much further out with her ult, and she just does a lot more damage. And I think has more consistent CC than he does. So it's like... He's okay. I mean, if you roam around the map, you can definitely make plays with Alistar. His uptime on engages, and his engages are a lot more crisp and consistent than Leona on roam. So if you just roll up with Alistar with mobility boots, you know, headbutt pull, kill somebody. Whereas, like, with Leona, you gotta hit something. You know, you gotta hit your E or your R or something to start the fight. So he's okay. He can definitely work. I just feel like you really, like... He's not as good with, like, Zeke's. Like, you can press your ult, like, right when you start the fight if you want to. Um, but it's kind of like a thing where you want to wait a little bit. You don't want to do it right away. Then you want to take a little bit of damage first a lot of times and then crack it when you're, like, 70% once they're focusing you. Um, so, I don't know. He's, he's all right. He's all right. I think they're probably better choice. Like, I'd rather have Rakan or Leona if you want that type of hard engage. And then Karma, I'm just putting on Tier 2 as sort of honorary. I'm not really sure if she should be up this high, but um, 
she did get a nerf to her base arm or she got a buff to her base armor of like six which is huge and then it's easier to hit her empowered q um and she gets a lot more mana regen so she can throw more q's so she has really good push really good mobility her cc is really lacking um but in theory she could be pretty good with a um with zeke's she has a really low cooldown ult so you can trigger that a lot you can speed up the person um so they can stick to him and get more zeke's hits um so she has like some okay synergy with zeke's if that's something that you want to get um she's could be decent with athenes like an athenes plus ardent combo could be kind of decent on her because she does do you know damage with her q and other stuff in her kit um so you'd get more healing off of like shielding somebody so I, I think that the items are pretty good for her right now i think that the meta as far as like push in bot and try to harass can be pretty good um you might see her in pro play combined with something like a um a heimerdinger or a uh, caitlin if people want to try caitlin it's like caitlin heimer just some kind of push lane ezreal push poke classic combination you might see her a bit more so it's possible she could be higher tier two i don't think i'd put her in tier one for solo queue but um it could work her problem is that like her numbers are just still pretty low like her shield is very low it's like 190 i think base shield um yeah just a lot of her like really powerful utility has been nerfed over the last you know few years so i think she can be good i just think she gets outshined in a lot of team fights later on by things like um sona or soraka if it comes down to that but um she is very good at sort of just the fiesta, like running around, split pushing, you know, poking people out. She's okay at that. And then kind of the honorable mentions here, um, and I won't go, we don't have time to go through all these, unfortunately, but like Braum is okay, but I dropped him out of the tier two down to tier three just because Lucian, um, Lucian has fallen out of the meta a bit. Like we just don't see Lucian nearly as much as we used to. The R did hurt his wave clear. I don't remember the other nerf that he got, but the R does hurt his wave clear. And I think people are just playing more long range stuff or stuff that out bullies him early. Like Jin is very popular. Um, Essence Reaver is just not as good on him as I thought it would be, and a lot of other people thought as well. Just because like you don't want to really use your ult to start a fight a lot of times, and you're losing timing on the Essence Reaver too, so it lasts less time now. Um, so the Essence Reaver nerf itself hurts him, and then it just doesn't... Like, it seems like it should synergize with him, but it just doesn't because you don't want to be proactively using that ult. You want to use it to hunt people down at the end. So it really leaves him, which is Black... Um, like, Blatherin King and Black Cleaver, which... It's okay, you know? Um, but... I think most people are just going towards Jen and Misfortune. It's just kind of the go-to early game bully champs that can just do stuff on very few items. Um, I think Jen actually is pretty legit the more that i play with him if it's like a decent gen is is pretty legit i'm i'm not entirely convinced about the misfortune i've seen some decent misfortunes i, I guess shifting back towards this team fight meta i think she is very good in a team fight meta so if you have tanks that can hold people still while she channels her ult i think that can be really good but yeah i just think that neither one of them synergize particularly well with Braum. so he's okay i mean it's not like you can't win with him you definitely can it's just he's not like amazing with zeke's he's not amazing with um a lot of the like popular items and runes or like it doesn't have a lot of synergy with a lot of the 80 carries right now since they don't attack very much they don't have like attack resets and things um then it takes a while for like Jin to trigger all of the shots on the stun for example but he's decent i just knocked him down a little bit for those reasons thresh still can be good but he has kind of a hard time into some of these matchups. He can definitely get bullied out by Brand and Zyra early on. Morgana just completely obliterates him. Um, so he can work. If you're a good Thresh player, it can work. But he still has problems with runes and itemization. It's like his base stats are so, so low. And there just aren't like any amazing runes that jump out. Like, man, this is great on Thresh. Or like items it's like yeah you gotta have this on thrash it's like zeke's is okay but his ult has it's like 140 seconds is pushing it a little bit um it's like he's all right if you're a thrash one trick you can definitely win with him nautilus i get asked about a lot his base stats are just too low i think he just he's deceptively like a lot squishier than it seems like he should be right now in this meta like his hook is good but you can't throw it through walls so you can't really get a lot of the element of surprise hooks that you can get off of like blitz or um thrash pike 
You know, it has to be open field where they see you. I mean, you can be in a bush and throw it, like, not through a wall and get people, but it just limits a lot of your options with him. And his E is very expensive to spam for, like, wave clear and damage and team fight, so... And it just doesn't do as much damage as it used to, so... His point click old is pretty nice. They lowered the cooldown a while ago, so that definitely has some potential to it, but... Um, he's okay, I mean... He's all right. Like you could, you could definitely win with him. I just the few times that I've seen him, it hasn't really, he hasn't really been a huge problem. He does have a huge hitbox on his hook, so it is pretty easy to hit hooks compared to some of the other hook champions. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. I just feel like he needs a little bit more tanky. Like his W should be a little tankier. The shield should be up a little bit, or the E should at least cost less mana, so you could spam it and wave clear with him. Um. Yeah, I mean, Blitz is very good, you know, if you can make Blitz work. I just feel like Pike is just a better Blitz now. Um, he's just more versatile. There's just other stuff you can do with him. I think that Thresh is a better Blitz. Um, you know, Blitz does have the point click. You land the hook, you get the kill, basically. He has a lot of burst damage early on. Um, but yeah, he's very, very one-dimensional. So that's why he's a bit lower. So he's extremely good at what he does, but he only does one thing. Um, you know, Tarek... Pretty, I mean, the nerf on Tarek is brutal on his ult. It's like 160 seconds or something for his ult just because of the Tarek E combo mid. Um, he doesn't have a lot of presence in lane a lot of times. Like, his itemization's not great. The runes aren't great on him right now. So he's okay. Can you win with him? Sure. But I feel like they're just better choices. If we move towards a more, like, full-on, like, all-out teamfight meta, we might see Tarek a little bit more, but... Um, I think just, like I said, the nerf to his ult, the fact that it's kind of an early game meta and he doesn't have a lot of presence, the nerf to tier, um, a few patches ago, all of these things have made it a little rougher on Tarek. Um, Vagar support's okay. Why are you mad, Rory? Honey, she, she might want to go back to sleep. Do you want to go back to sleep? I think she wants to go back to sleep. She had peed all over herself. I don't know. Yeah, I think she might need some more sleep, honey. Yeah, I think she's upset. Um, Vagar is surprisingly like okay as support. I mean, that cage is super annoying for a lot of champs, especially for like Rakan. It's really good. A lot of these other melee champs um, that can't get out of it very easily. Um, it can be pretty good. Like if you trap a Nami, I guess Nami's not melee, but like a Lua or a Nami, and they can't escape it very well. Like you can pick them off. Um, so he's alright. Like, Bard's okay. I get asked about Bard sometimes. Like, you can roam around the map and make plays with him. It's just, I feel like you're working really hard to achieve the same kind of stuff that other champs could. They, if they increase his attack range to, like, 525 or 550, he'd be a lot better. But 500 range on his autos, so you land those meeps, is just really, really dangerous in a lot of matchups. So, he can be okay. I just feel like there are better lane bullies if that's what you're in the market for. Velkaz just got a buff, which is nice, um, but he's still pretty susceptible to assassins, so we'll see. Can be a situational good counterpick into Brand or Zyra, which is nice, but um, otherwise he might have some problems. Zillion's okay. I just think like Lulu does what he does better, run around the map, control people. Like His crowd control is just a bit more conditional. You can get the double bomb stun, which is nice, but you know I feel like they're just are better options most of the time, but you can definitely win them. Shin just got a pretty big nerf. You do see him in pro play primarily with funnel comps. You can protect the funnel person. I think we probably aren't going to see that anymore, but he's okay. I just feel like there aren't a lot of amazing items on him right now. Like Zeke's obviously is a little awkward um, because he doesn't have mana, and then also he's a really long ult. So uh, he's okay. The loss of banner hurts a lot. He just doesn't have a good like go-to item. So, I mean, you can do, like, Knight's Vow Locket, sure, but he's all right. And then Gragas is someone who's been getting, like, picked up a lot more lately. You're seeing him in pro play as support. I'll have to experiment with this and see a bit more. I have tried it in the past. Um, <clears throat> like, we're seeing him a lot more top lane and um, jungle right now. Like, he does have a really powerful kit. Like, his E is very good at stopping people who engage, you know, so it's good against the Zac or Elise Sin, so you might want to pick it there just because Jan has been nerfed so hard. Um, so that's something that's possible, and obviously his ult is really nice, high impact. You can use it to peel, you can use it to engage. 
It's very skill shot intensive. If you mess up that ult, it's going to be real bad. Like if you blow them away when you're trying to blow them towards you, or if you blow them towards you when you're trying to blow them away, that feels really bad. So there's a lot of skill involved with that. But I think like his wave clear is just too expensive. I think with his Q, his W just doesn't feel as strong to me as it could. Um, he's okay. I just feel like there are just better options. Like Once again, it's kind of like Bard. You're just working really hard for something that you could probably achieve easier with a higher ranked support. But <clears throat> if you want to try him out, I think he's in one of his better positions that he has been in a while. Um, I guess I did end up going through all of the honorable mentions, but... Uh, let me just look at him, because I do get asked about him fairly regularly, because you are seeing him in pro play. Like, he does have the sustain, but, like... I guess that's decent wave clear. It has to charge up. Like, he doesn't have a lot of presence in lane, is something I've... Like, when I've played against him, like, he can barrel roll, you know, and do a little bit of damage. It's just nice, but <clears throat> it's got a delay on it. It's fairly easy to dodge, and the payoff is not that high. Drunken Rage just feels pretty terrible. Um, they did lower the cooldown on it, which is nice, but... It's alright. I mean, Body Slam is cool, but it has a long cooldown early on. Um, yeah, I just feel like he doesn't have a ton of presence <clears throat> in the landing phase a lot of time. Now, your ult, like I said, the ult is very powerful. It's very nice. Um, well, I thought it used to have a 1.0 ratio. I guess they nerfed that a long time ago. It only has a 0.7 now. Um, but yeah, you can definitely get kills. I mean, if you, you know, flat body slam flash onto somebody and then explosive cast them back into your team, you know, they're going to die. So he has like some decent combos. I feel like he just doesn't quite do enough. Like, I don't know. Maybe it's like, I don't know what, because his cooldowns aren't like super long. I feel like his body slam cooldown is a bit long. I mean, you do get a three second reduction if you hit somebody with it. He's okay. He's okay. I just feel like, you know, there could be better choices, but he is a tank, you know, someone who's tanky that can also um, do quite a bit of AP damage if that's how you want to build him. So I think you have, like, you know, you have some options with him, but probably better choices out there. Okay, that's going to be it. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. Tell other people. Uh, if you're interested, I am on Twitter, at the Strat Prof. If you want to, you know, follow me on Twitter... You know, send my link some other ways. Uh, if you know other people that like it, let them know. And come out, check us out on stream. You know, we stream every night starting around 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And hope to see you there. Uh, and I'll see everybody later. Have a good day.